Hello friends, uh, in this video we will be talking about the alcohol fermentation and we have seen uh, the basic overview of uh, the anaerobic metabolic process inside the cell. Now in this video we will be talking about the alcohol fermentation which is a part of the anaerobic metabolic process going on in eukaryotes as well as in bacteria because uh, alcohol fermentation can be seen in bacteria as well as it can be seen in the lower eukaryotes like yeast. Uh, because yeast can produce alcohol and that's how we use yeast to produce alcohol and various types of ethanol. So how this whole process works and we'll be talking about the biochemistry of all this process. Now I remind you this the picture that I'm going to use is taken from uh, Pearson Education so copyright 2011 Pearson Education. So let's begin with it. Now like, uh, like other anaerobic metabolism, this alcohol fermentation also uh, require, does not require the presence of oxygen because it will produce very low amount of ATP but the sole idea in this case is to produce ethanol for our own requirements. So let's begin with it. We have glucose because that's the food source, that's the raw material for producing the alcohol, right? And the ultimate product here is ethanol and we all know what ethanol is. I don't need to give you further information about it. So this is the substrate glucose, the product is the ethanol, so product here is substrate is glucose and we can produce this ethanol via certain intermediates, right, actually two intermediate, right, one is very much common that, call, that is called pyruvate, you know glucose is a six carbon molecule and pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. And we all know from the basic understanding of metabolic pathways is that pyruvate can be easily produced from glucose by the process called glycolysis, right? And during glycolysis, they will generate four ATPs, four additional ATPs there. They consume two ATPs, so ultimately it will give us two net ATP gain. So if we look at here in case of alcohol fermentation, from glucose we are producing pyruvate and then from the pyruvate we will be producing ethanol. But that's not the it because if you look at here from the production of pyruvate from glucose via the process called you know glycolysis, it will require 2 ADP, it will produce 2 ATP, that is the net gain I have told you. And during this process they require NAD plus because the reducing agent because they need to reduce the NAD uh, plus uh, because during this process we have oxidation, we have reduction. So redox reaction requires the agent to be reduced. So NAD plus is the agent to be reduced into NADH, right, plus H plus. So 2H plus is always there, right. So this is the process of uh, glycolysis. So let me write glyco lysis for process and it is producing pyruvate from glucose, fine. Now from the pyruvate there is a two stage process of producing ethanol. Now there are other kind of fermentation pathways seen in, in bacteria and in eukaryotes also, mainly in bacteria. They are called lactic acid fermentation where they produce lactic acid directly from the pyruvate but in case of al alcohol or ethanol fermentation we need to go a further stage because if you look at here in the pyruvate it is 3 carbon right but if you look at in the ethanol it is 2 carbon molecule. So it's always a good idea for understanding the biochemical pathways is to find out which carbon goes where because it's all about carbon chemistry right. So from the glucose 3 carbon molecule is being produced during the process uh, carbon, uh, I mean uh, two, three, two of the other three, three carbons are going somewhere else, that's not important here in this alcohol fermentation. But during the process from the pyruvate to ethanol, one extra carbon is lost and this carbon is lost in the form of carbon dioxide. So the one carbon from pyruvate is lost by producing carbon dioxide and that gives us remaining two carbon that is producing as the ethanol. But during this process, losing carbon dioxide from pyruvate directly converts the pyruvate into what is called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is also a two carbon molecule. So once the acetaldehyde is produced, then this last stage will incorporate release of, you know, last stage will convert this acetaldehyde into ethanol and during this last stage, they recycle this NADH because you know recycling NADH is very important because we need require free NAD plus 
for this whole process to go on and for that we need to recycle the NADH again back to NAD plus and that's what is done in the last stage of the ethanol fermentation converting acetaldehyde into ethanol right so remember the 6 carbon of the glucose it will produce 2 pyruvates so 2 3 carbon each so we get 6 carbon right here now during this process each of the 3 carbon loses 1 carbon dioxide 1 carbon as carbon dioxide we are left with 2 carbon molecule acetaldehyde now rest of all process are twice because you know one glucose is divided into two pyruvate so let's rest of the process are very linear and they produce ethanol like this process right and the example of uh, you know ethanol production here is provided for the yeast and how yeast is producing ethanol you know because yeast is hugely used in the fermentation industries to produce ethanol right so that's it guys and i hope that's helpful thank you